Greetings, saints. This is Dr. Terry A. Webb, the pastor of Christianity Baptist Church. I'm coming with you today with a black history moment about George Lyle, the first black Baptist church to be organized in the United States, 1773 to 1775, was located in Silver Bluff, South Carolina. It was located on the plantation of George Galfin, who allowed his slave, George Lyle, to serve as the preacher to that congregation. Thus, Lyle may have been the first black preacher to an organized congregation in America. Lyle was born in 1750 in Virginia. His master, Henry Sharp, moved to Georgia prior to the Revolutionary War. While attending church with his master, Lyle was converted and baptized. Soon thereafter, it was discovered that he had great gifts as a preacher and his owner allowed him to travel freely throughout the region so that he could exercise his gifts. He traveled along the Savannah River as far as the Yamacraw region, where massive rice plantations made use of thousands of slaves. Lyle was eventually freed by his owner so that he could devote himself to preaching the gospel among slaves and before some white audiences. However, when the Revolutionary War erupted, Lyle's work was interrupted, his owner was killed in the war, and the heirs to the estate tried to re-enslave Lyle, but a British Army officer intervened to save him in July 1778, when the city of Savannah fell to the Patriot forces and the British fled to Jamaica. Lyle went with the British as an indentured servant. He had to work for the governor of Jamaica until the cost of his transport had been covered. That was accomplished in 1784. Before leaving Savannah, Lyle baptized Andrew Bryan and his family. Bryan would go on to establish the African Baptist Church of Savannah. Thus, Lyle was largely responsible for establishing the Black Baptist Church in South Carolina and Georgia before the end of the Revolutionary War. After his departure, the, the Silver Bluff Church continued under the leadership of David George. After migrating in 1782 to Nova Scotia, where he established several Baptist churches, David George led a group of freed slaves to Sierra Leone in West Africa in 1792. There, they organized a new colony, and George ordained the first Baptist church in Africa. In light of this, it could be said that Lyle's ministry resulted in the establishment of black Baptist congregations in two countries. Following his period of indentured servitude, Lyle went to work and quickly organized a church in Kingston, Jamaica. That congregation quickly grew to more than 500 members, despite the fact that Jamaica was a British colony that was dominated by the Anglican Church. He also started and supervised a school for the children in that community. His success was due in part to his industrious nature. He was also well connected to members of the Jamaican Assembly, one member of which did some fundraising on Lyle's behalf from supporters in England. Through his efforts in Jamaica, Lyle became the first American-born missionary to another country. His influence in South Carolina before the war and his influence on the life of David George mean that Lyle was responsible for evangelizing many parts of the world. White people were willing to support Lyle's ministry because they were convinced that his efforts resulted in making their slaves less inclined to resist or challenge the authority of their owners. For instance, he would not allow any slave to attend one of the services who did not have the permission of his or her master. He also sought the approval of the local authorities for any literature or instructions he was going to share. Unlike preachers like Nat Turner and Morris Brown, and, uh, and many others who used religious gatherings as an occasion to plot rebellion, slave owners were sure that no such thing would occur at a meeting held by Lyle. One owner said that he did not need an overseer or a whip, 
because Lyle's effect on his slaves had more than industrious and obedience. Lyle died in 1820. To God be the glory. George Lyle.